Can I recover my four seconds? <laughs> On the third day and last day of final submissions, the IBC chair of Ulache Bukati, the commission itself and the four dissenting commissioners were put on the spot to answer questions that were fronted by the seven bench judge. We have an election offenses act. On the question of why the IBC chair was in a rush to announce the results, this was the response. And as to the circumstances, why the chairperson opted to declare the results on the very day that he did, the explanation is to be found in paragraphs 86 and 111 of his, of his affidavit. But if I may summarize, he made considerations concerning security of his staff who at that particular point in time were suffering arrests, abductions, and injuries to officials, including commissioners. On the question of why the four dissenting commissioners did not protest the rules assigned to them, this was the defense. But the commissioners took the firm view that it would be responsible for them to let their infightings be made public for fear of eroding public confidence in IEBC during an election year. However, Advocate George Murugu, representing IBC Chair Fula Chebukati, had a different response to the roles assigned, denying allegations that the four commissioners were given domestic chores. Certain commissioners were given roles akin to domestic services. Nothing can be further from the truth. We all saw it. We all saw the commissioners interacting with the results, interacting with the verification and tallying process. We all saw them announcing these results. We cannot unsee what we saw. Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu also called for clarity on why the quartet would pull out of the IBC's decision minutes before the announcement. At the time preceding their walking out. The posting of the results on the screen had ceased, had stopped. So all they wanted to know, these four commissioners, is to be given the opportunity to peruse the results of these 27 constituencies so as to satisfy themselves. Defending the last-minute walkout, advocate Paul Mwangi termed their move as an 89th-minute penalty, saying that that was the only play they had at the moment. If you participate in a game and the wrong penalty is given on the 89th minute, you cannot be asked, why did you play all along? Sometimes it is the 89th-minute penalty that shows the unfairness of the provision. According to lawyers of the four dissenting commissioners, the divisions within the commission began as early as April. Members of the court, if you look at the fifth respondent replying affidavit, Juliana Cherera, an extra JC2 are memos. These memos are way back from April when the chairman unilaterally uh, caused the reshuffling and transferring of returning officers. Defending the IBC as a commission, advocates some men refuted the accusation that Venezuelans altered Form 34A. The issue of the Venezuelans, they, had, uh, they were involved in deploying of infrastructure and the servers platform. We are, they did not have any access to the RTS. Look at the affidavit of Michael Oma. Look at the affidavit of Hilda Cavongo. It actually shows... Uh, uh, the kind of, of rights they had, there was no unauthorized access and in fact the, the scrutiny report will, will bear that out. And on the questions of the attainment of 50 plus 1 threshold, stray ballots and the effects of voter turnout in the election, IBC advocates defended IBC's position. Harriet Chimea, K24.